God bless you dear students. So let's continue with the further part of this chapter number 6, the switch. So let's begin from page 60. Do I ask you, my dear Dane, to walk out the door? There are pan and ink and paper on this table. Is your hand steady enough to write? It was when you come in. Study it again and write that I shall dictate quick friend quick. Pressing his hand to his bewildered hand, Darne sat down at the table. Carton with his right hand in his press pocket stood close beside him. Write exactly as I speak. To whom do I address it? To no one. Carton still had his hand in his pocket. Do I date it? No. So uh, here uh, Carton said that uh, did I ask you Dane uh, just to walk out the door and then he said that uh, pan and ink and paper are kept on the table and Carton is also asking whether your hand is stable to write then Dane is telling to Carton when he came in at that moment he, his hand was stable and then this Carton advised him to make his hand stable again and said him to write what he will dictate so he is telling Dane to write quickly and so this Dane is pressing his hand and sat down uh, on the at the table and Carton is standing just close beside him with his right hand in his pocket and also telling him to write the exact words when he start speaking and now this Dane is asking while writing to whom he has to address it then Carton just still stand there with his hand and in the pocket and uh, also telling him that uh, he uh, doesn't have to address to anyone. Then Dane asks whether he has to put the date and now Cotton says again no. Okay, now the next paragraph. Dane looked up at each question. Cotton standing over him with his hand in his pocket looked down. If you remember, said Carton, dictating the words that passed between us long ago. You will readily understand this when you see it. He was drawing <coughs> his hand from his pocket. He stopped when Dane looked up. Have you written? See it, Carton asked. I have. Is that a weapon in your hand? No, I am not armed. What is in your hand? Okay, so uh, this carton is standing beside Dane uh, by keeping his hand in his pocket and looking down. And uh, while he is uh, dictating, uh, then he says, if you remember about the words that passed between them long ago. So when you will see it, then you uh, easily understand it also. And after that, he just took out his hand from his back pocket and uh, as Dane looked up, he stopped and he asked Dane uh, whether he has written. Then uh, Dane said that he has written and asked that is there a weapon in your hand and uh, Cartman replied that he has no weapon. And Dane wants to know what is in his hand. Now, you shall know directly, write on, there are but a few words more. He dictated again, I am thankful that the time has come when I can prove that. That I do so is no cause for regret or grief. As he said these words with his eyes fixed on Dane, his hand slowly and softly moved down close to Dane's face. Okay, 
so uh, cartoon now again started to dictate as few more words were there and uh, then he is uh, saying that he is thankful but about the time uh, and uh, now which has to has come so he can uh, prove and what all he will uh, do not for any regret or grief as uh, he finish uh, finished saying his words and he looked at dane and uh, slow, he slowly moved down his hand just close to dane's face the pen dropped from dane's fingers on the table what papers that he asked paper i know of no such thing there is nothing here take up the pen and finish hurry hurry the prisoner looked at dane carton with clouded eyes and an altered manner of breathing carton his hand again in his pocket looked steadily him hurry hurry okay no no the pan which was in dane's hand uh, it uh, just dropped on the table from his fingers and uh, uh, when carton's hand moved slowly close to dane's face Uh, then he felt that uh, something is like a vapor, and he just asked Cotton that what is this like vapor? Then uh, he replied that nothing is there. Uh, so why Darne feels a touch of vapor? Because this uh, wants to make him free from there, and uh, he gave him some kind of drugs. Uh, and after that, Cotton says to. take up the pan and finish it in hurry and then dane looked at cotton and his vision just lost and also the manner of uh, breathing uh, now is different and it is just because of the drug and now cotton again put his hand in his pocket and he just looked gradually at dane okay <clears throat> now the next paragraph Uh, Dane made an effort to collect himself. Then he bent over the paper once more. If it had been otherwise, Carton's hand was at Dane's face again. He looked at the pen and saw it was trailing off into intelligible signs. So here, trailing off means uh, just become weaker and intelligible signs, uh, which is unable to understand. Okay, so uh, now Dane, with all his effort, uh, just trying to control himself, and uh, he bent over the paper once more, and again, Carton's hand moves close to Dane's face, and uh, what he saw that uh, the pen uh, just become weaker from Dane's fingers, and it is unable to understand. Okay. Now Carton's hand dropped to his side. Dane sprang up with a reproachful look, but Carton's hand was close and firm at his nostrils, and Carton's left arm caught him round the waist. For a few seconds, Dane struggled slightly with a man who had come to lay down his life for him, but within a minute or so. he was stretched insensible uh, on the ground okay insensible means uh, not able to feel so now cotton uh, just put his hand to the side of dan and after that dan just jump as he feels that something is wrong and uh, the, but cotton quickly put his hand firmly Uh, close to Dane's nostrils, and he caught him by his left hand, uh, just round his waist. And uh, after that, for a few seconds, Dane struggled a bit <coughs> with Carton, uh, who really came there to save him. And uh, then, within a minute, Dane was not able to feel anything, and he fell on the ground. Okay, now let's see the next paragraph. quickly but with hands and heart true to his purpose 
cotton dressed himself in the clothes Dane had laid aside, combed back his hair and tied it with a ribbon the prisoner I had worn. He put the paper in the breast pocket, then he seated himself at the table, resting his forehead in his hands and called, Enter there, come in. And uh, then this cotton quickly dressed himself in Dane's clothes and uh, also combed back his hair by uh, just tying them with the Dane's ribbon and put uh, the paper in his pocket. And he seated there at the table and uh, put his hands uh, just uh, to uh, resting his forehead and called, Enter there, come in. A man came to the door. The parting interview has overpowered my friend. He was faint when he came in and is fainter now. Quick, call assistance. The man withdrew. He returned with two others. They raised the unconscious figure, placed it on a litter they had brought to the door and carried it away. So uh, now he informed that when this man came, he was faint, uh, fainted and uh, so after his call, the man came to the door and he saying to himself that now the farewell or to say goodbye for his friend's interview that is all over and uh, now he is too strong for somebody means for his friend Dani because he did all such so truly uh, full, uh, fulfill his purpose to save his friend Dani and then this man returned and came with other two men and they raised that unconscious figure and that unconscious figure is here Dani and they placed him on a stretcher and brought him to the door to carry him away. Okay, so let's come to the last paragraph. The door closed and Cotton was left alone. He listened for any sound that might signal suspicion or alarm. There was none. Keys turned, doors clashed, footsteps passed along distant passages. No cry was raised or unusual hurry made. Breathing more freely in a little while, he sat down at the table again and listened until the clock struck two. So uh, after happening all this, Carton was left alone there and uh, the door was closed. Then he tried to listen any sound of keys turn, door clashed, footsteps passed along distant passages but no sound was coming of anything and Carton just was breathing freely and he sat down there at the table again and was waiting to listen until the clock struck two. So in this way he sacrificed his life for Dane and according to this his plan he sent out Dane from that place. So this is the story uh, which just express uh, the love and sacrifice uh, uh, for um, the friends. So now it comes to an end. Okay children to get the question answers please go through the description box of this video. And now your first semester uh, course is also completed and be prepared yourself uh, very well for exams. So just study well and all the best.